Welcome to Interweb 17. I am Chad Hauer, also known as Kudzu. I will be taking you on a guided tour of the soon to be upcoming Interweb 17. We will spend some time covering what is new in Interweb 17. If you are new to Interweb itself, don't worry. The session still applies to you, and most of the content does not require previous knowledge of Interweb. Interweb 17 is not a small step. Interweb 17 is a huge step which will catapult Interweb far into the lead, even far ahead of web tools available on platforms other than Delphi. Interweb 17, because of the new rendering engine, shifts much of the CPU and RAM usage to the browser. For a single user, this does not make much of a difference, but multiply that by several hundred or several thousand, and the difference is very noticeable. Interweb 15 can already handle many thousands of users without issue and is used in many high-load deployments. Interweb 17 allows even more users to be handled on the same equivalent hardware. By far, IWML is the biggest feature. We believe it to be even revolutionary and we hope that you will too after learning about it. Out of the box, Interweb 17 will support many major frameworks, including jQuery UI, EXTJS, Bootstrap, Data Tables, and many more. The Custom Control API is easy to use, and we will be demonstrating this later in the session. Interweb 17 also supports REST and WordPress. Facebook integration is also planned for a future release. Initially, Interweb 17 focuses on our flagship version, Delphi. However, because of IWML, we plan to also support Lazarus, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, .NET, Java, Python, PHP, JavaScript, and more. Interweb 15 is the current release, and there will be no Interweb 16. Despite the many new features, Interweb 17 is also nearly 100% backwards compatible. We will see this in a demo later. In fact, Interweb 17 is an add-on to Interweb 15 currently and relies on the release builds of Interweb 15. Displayed here is an Interweb 15 application using Bootstrap. With 17, you can mix and match. We say 15 plus 17 equals 17. This might seem strange unless you are a JavaScript developer in which this might actually be possible. But in our case, we mean that 17 will include what is now known as Interweb 15 plus the new Interweb 17 package. This ensures full backwards compatibility and makes 17 as an optional add-on. 15 and 17 pages can be mixed in a single application. I have designed this session to get you into the Delphi IDE as quickly as possible, but we do have a few concepts to introduce first. Let's start with IWML. IWML is an acronym for Intraweb Markup Language. IWML allows us to perform the final rendering in the browser itself. This not only simplifies our rendering engine, but also lowers CPU and RAM usage on the server. IWML also makes development and debugging of controls much easier. IWML allows much easier client code to be written because it can work on the controls rather than the DOM. And finally, IWML allows Interweb to be more easily ported to Lazarus, Linux, .NET, Java, and our other planned targets. IWML is implemented using ACORN. ACORN is an open source object format which is an acronym for A to Z Compact Object Readable Notation. Compared to JSON, ACORN allows IWML to be much more compact and isn't what I call shifty. By shifty, I mean it does not require a constant and excessive need of the shift key or other keys such as control and alternate when coding by hand. We used JSON in the early development phases, but we, were, we almost wore out the shift key on our keyboards. This combined with other shortcomings of JSON, which required ugly workarounds, led us to develop ACORN. JSON is still used internally in some places for other communications, such as REST and Delta packets. Some of this will be moved to ACORN in the future, but of course REST will always continue to use JSON. Prior to using JSON, we had also experimented with XML. XML was even wordier and required constant matching of end tags. 
The IWML on the left renders to the output seen on the right. Writing IWML is much easier than constructing the HTML and CSS from the ground up. This concludes our introduction to IWML, but we will return to IWML later in the session. As I know, Delphi, or C++ for our C++ users, is what everyone wants to see. We got here as fast as we could with minimal lead-in. For the last six months, we've been working on the Delphi designer, and it's finally ready to be used. WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, is not functional yet, but from within the designer, you can easily preview your output. The current designer is a stopgap measure and is a temporary designer. Complete enough to be fully usable, but will be replaced later in the 17.1 release with a more robust designer written in IntraWeb 17 itself. Even though it will be IntraWeb 17 based, it will be fully integrated into the Delphi designer. The designer is only active for 17 pages. IntraWeb 15 pages still use the previous IntraWeb designer. Despite IWML in Delphi, we still use DFMs for storage. The reason for this is simple. It was far easier to integrate into Delphi without having to replace the streaming system at design time. At runtime, the DFMs are streamed and converted to IWML in an efficient transformation. Even if we had dispensed with the DFMs and stored pages as IWML, we would still need to render the IWML at runtime to reflect changes that occur to the controls at runtime. The net penalty is zero as the pages read from the DFM into memory for the developer to interact with and then are converted to IWML directly from memory. Now let's see what everyone is waiting for, IntraWeb 17 and Delphi. I'm going to start with an empty project. I've already named it Guess. It's created using the new project wizard just like in IntraWeb 15. Now let's build the application from scratch but using IntraWeb 17. The first thing we need to do is build the user interface. In IntraWeb 17 there are several ways to design the UI. In the future there will be a full what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG designer here. As you can see it is not ready yet. This will come in 17.1. What you see now is just a mock-up. Everything else is functional. For now, let's start with a tree tab which is fully functional. As this is a blank page, there is not much to see yet. Let's add a control. As you can see, there are quite a few components already and many more are coming. Currently 17 supports jQuery UI, full calendar, data tables, SVJS, Toast, and more. We will be adding Bootstrap to 17, which 15 already supports. We will also be adding ext.js and many others. All of these will be included in IntraWeb 17 without the need for add-ons. The Control API is open and easy to use. We will be covering this in a later session. For now I'm going to add a jQuery accordion group. Now let's add an accordion to the group and a text to the accordion. Now that we have a few controls, let's work with them. To modify the controls, we use the Object Inspector. Let's set the text property of Hello World and give the accordion a title. Now let's take a look at what this will look like in the browser. We don't have a WYSIWYG designer yet, but we do not need to run the application either, simply just to look at what we're working on. Down on the bottom right of the 17 designer are preview buttons for the browsers. Let's select this first one, which is Chrome App Mode. This will launch Chrome, but instead of launching in a new tab, in an existing Chrome instance, it will instead launch in an app window without the toolbars or menus. This is very useful for testing. As you can see, we have a nearly live preview. Let's add some more items and do this again. 
This time we're going to use a different method instead of the tree to add controls. We're going to use the edit IWML button right here. In this view we can edit raw IWML. As you can see IWML is very comfortable to hand edit. Much cleaner than trying to hand edit JSON, XML, or even a DFM. Let's add another accordion and group text. We're going to do this by cutting and pasting. Let's change some of the properties. We can preview from this window as well. And now you can see our changes and the accordions are functional. As you can see, even without WYSIWYG, things are very functional. Although we edited the raw IWML, you can see the new changes are now reflected in the tree, and we can work with them now using the object inspector if we wish. In addition to using preview, we can also make the app live simply by running it. And there we have a live application. Now we have a classic basic user interface. Let's add some more controls and some code. IntraWeb 17 includes many layouts, which you may be familiar with from VCL forms, FMX forms, or WPF. You can also use bootstrap layouts, etc., but our layouts actually have a lot more flexibility in many cases. Now let's give our controls some names so we can reference them. Now let's take a look at the IWML. As you can see, the IWML is still very compact, very easy to read, and very easy to work with. Now that we have our UI, let's make it do something. I'm going to switch to the code view by pressing F12, and as you can see, it looks very familiar. Let's add some private fields. We will use these fields to track the user state. Now let's add a create event on the page so that we can initialize these new fields that we've made. Now let's create a click event for a button so that you don't have to be bored watching me type, I'm going to paste the code. This is all basic Delphi code. I'm not going to go through it line by line. As you can see, it simply provides simple logic for a guess the number game. We can do all the normal debugging as in a normal application. All user interface updates are partial or what some of you may know as Ajax. 17 never refreshes the whole page unless you force it to or change pages. Some of you who have been with IntraWeb a very long time 
may remember that we had this technology long before Ajax even existed, and this is an update to that using different, more modern browser techniques though. We can set breakpoints, and we should be able to run the application. You can see, now we've hit our breakpoint. Let's cheat. The magic number is 87. Now let's do something that was a lot harder in Inchweb 15 and 14. Let's add some client-side code. To add client-side code, we simply add it in this tab. It gets way better than that, though. We aren't just adding random JavaScript. We can directly hook into events. And instead of having to manipulate the DOM directly, we work with the same classes as we do in Delphi. We can place non-event JavaScript in here, too. For now, though, we want to hook the get into the guest button click on the client side, and all we have to do is add some code. Now we've easily added some code to do client side validation. If it passes, we call call server event, which will call the server click for the button. This allows us to control if the server event is called or not, depending if we need it or not. Note how similar the code looks to Delphi code. We work with the same user interface controls, not the DOM directly. We can even use the preview to test it. Call server event will result in an error during preview as there is no application to back it up on the server, but client-side code runs fine. And if you run it in the end, and you can see, even in the preview, our client-side code is run. So we've actually technically built an application without even using Delphi code. What you've seen here is the interweb TypeScript or JavaScript version. You can do this using Visual Studio Code and we're building plugins for those as well. But we are here for Delphi, so let's take a look at some more Delphi. Controls updated in JavaScript on the client will also cause properties of the corresponding objects in the server to be updated. 17 synchronizes the controls both ways and transparently to the developer. Now let's see how we can use Interweb 15 and 17 together. You can take any existing 14 or 15 application and start adding 17 pages without breaking or needing to rewrite any of your existing application. I selected new form and this is a 15 page. For 17 pages, you can see there's an extra option. I'll go back to show you. Here's if you want to add a 17 page. We need to add in the use as a reference to our 17 page. And those of you familiar with Interweb 15 code will notice this looks very familiar. It's the same syntax used to move between two separate 14 or 15 pages. And let's make this the startup form. Now we have a standard 15 page and we've set it to be the startup page. We cannot have two startup pages though, so let's remove it from the 17 page. Now let's run it. This is a 15 page. This is a 17 page. This concludes the demonstration. 
Interweb 17 components are amazingly simple to create, far simpler than controls for any prior Interweb version. The biggest difference in developing custom components for Interweb 17 is the language used. Up to and including Interweb 15, custom components were developed using Delphi and output HTML as a string output. In Interweb 17, custom controls are developed in JavaScript or any language that can transpile and interact with JavaScript classes. This only affects those who wish to write custom components. Most Interweb users will not need to use anything except Delphi or their own C++. We use TypeScript to develop the built-in custom controls, which generates a final output in JavaScript. You can even use PassScript or Elm or any transpiler to make custom components if you want to stay with the syntax familiar to Delphi. The Custom Component API is open and just like prior versions of Interweb, we encourage both open source and third-party contributions. Let's see a demo. Let's see what is involved in developing a simple custom control and how easy it is to do. Because of time constraints, we will develop only a simple control. Despite that, I will show you that writing the logic of the control is the biggest part and that the overhead and scaffolding is minimal. We are going to develop a simple control called Smiley, which uses a button to show a simple smiley or frowny text emoticon. It could easily be adapted to use images instead. Custom controls fully support inheritance, just like VCL form controls. We could have more easily inherited from an existing button control, but instead we will build Smiley from the ground up to show the complete process. Custom controls can be developed in any IDE that supports JavaScript. You can even use a simple text editor like Notepad, even Edlin will work. We use TypeScript because it fixes many of JavaScript's major issues and makes using JavaScript bearable. The TypeScript will seem familiar to both Delphi and c -sharp developers. This should not come as a surprise. All three were designed by Anders Heilsberg. Here we are using the open source Visual Studio Code. I've already loaded a shell unit to start our smiley. So far, all we have is a namespace and an empty class. The namespace is important. All controls must exist in Interweb Control's namespace. Within that namespace, we need to establish a unique sub-namespace, and we have chosen Smiley Control. In most cases, we would use a group name to cover several custom controls. For many libraries that Interweb supports, it uses four to five letters for libraries, such as JQUI for jQuery UI, FCIO for Full Calendar IO, CHJS for ChartJS, DTNET for DataTables.net, and so forth. Using four to five letters is not a requirement, but it makes typing the IWML tags a bit easier as custom controls must always use their prefix in IWML. Every control needs to choose a base or ancestor class. Because we want to show the complete process from the ground up, we have chosen focus control rather than a button. Controls which do not support focus would use control as the base instead of focus control. As you can see, smiley is underlined in red, which indicates we have a problem. Looking to the problems tab, we can see that we must implement the init DOM method. At a bare minimum, this is what must be implemented for even the most basic custom control. Most controls will implement two to three other methods for additional functionality. Let's implement the DOM method. Note the use of this keyword. This in TypeScript and JavaScript is the equivalent of self in Delphi. However, unlike Delphi, the use is mandatory for this. You cannot access fields or methods of the same class without it as you can in Delphi. We have added a field to store our button and an init DOM method to initialize the custom control. In the init DOM method, we create and store the button. Then we tell Interweb that the button is the root element. This is important for more complex controls, which are made up of more than one element. As this is a simple control, we have only one element, the button. At a very basic minimum, we now have a custom control. It doesn't do very much though at this point. Let's test our shell. To do this, we need two other files. We need an HTML file 
and also an IWML file. To augment testing, we will also create a code behind TypeScript file. The HTML file exists only to load IntraWeb. This HTML file is mostly empty, but you can use an HTML file with HTML and even tell IntraWeb to load into a div to mix with other HTML content. In this case, we are going to load our IWML into the body. We need an IWML file to display our control. Here we have a mostly empty IWML file. Let's add a text control and a smiley control. Finally, we have a TypeScript file that we will use later to test our control. Later, we will also add our control to Delphi so we can use it from a Delphi application. Now we are ready to test our control. To do this, we just run it. And there, we have our first custom control. At this point, it is rather useless though and doesn't even show a caption. Let's expand our control. We have added a property, an event, and two methods. IsHappy exposes a property usable from IWML. OnClick exposes a click event of the root element, which in our case is a button. There are ways to expose events and compound controls too, but we are a simple control with only a root element. In this case, IntraWeb automatically performs the hookups for us. We also have an initProps method in which we set a default parameter. Default parameters allow a more compact form of IWML, and we will see this shortly. The render method is where our logic goes. In the render method, we need to look at the exposed properties and update our control. In our case, we simply set the text of the button to a happy or a sad text emoticon. Now we are ready to test again. Now we can see a smile. Let's add some more smileys in our IWML to see how it works. We've added a gap control between our smileys to give them some space. We also now have three smiley controls instead of just one. The first one is a bare control with no properties. We have given it a name of smiley1. Names are optional. Controls can exist without a name as we saw in our first turn of smiley. The gap and text controls also exist without a name. The third smiley is a long form declaration. We set the isHappy property in a property block. Property blocks are useful when a control needs several properties to be set. Smiley2 uses a short form with a parameter. Parameters can contain more than one property or other information, but in our example, Smiley accepts only one parameter and uses it to control the isHappy property. We have enabled this using the initProps method. With a short form, the control declaration takes only one line instead of three. Many controls support parameters, and using them makes IWML far more compact and easier to read as well as write. Let's run to see our progress again. Between each run, we need to make sure that we are saving the IWML file. Now we have three smileys, one of which is sad. Now we are going to add some code behind the IWML page. Note that this code does not belong to the control itself, but is part of our test IWML page, which we are using to test the control. Now we have declared references to each of our smiley controls, allowing us to access them in code. We have also added three click events, one for each instance of our smiley. Let's run it again. Now, let's put our smiley control into Delphi. To do this, we need some Delphi code. Fortunately, all we have to do is run some automated processes and IntraWeb will convert our TypeScript control into Delphi for us. In the future, this will be a single step. For now, it is a few steps. I have grouped these steps into a single batch file. Now, we are almost ready to use it in Delphi. Here, I have an empty test project and an empty design package. The batch file that I ran has created everything else that we need. Let's add the pass file to the package and install it.
Now it is ready to use. Now we have our custom smiley. We can modify using the object inspector or using the IWML view. Here is our is happy property. We're going to give it a name. And now we're going to set a Delphi event. This time we're going to use Delphi code to interact with Smiley. That's it! That is how easy it is to create custom controls in IntraWeb 17. Let's take a little deeper look at IWML now. IntraWeb 17 is 15 plus years in the making. The general idea of IWML was conceived over 15 years ago and we've been refining the idea ever since. The obstacles at the time were quite simply JavaScript and the browsers. Doing IWML would have been possible, but very painful especially given the browser disparity that existed. Finally in recent times with HTML5, JavaScript enhancements, TypeScript, and other evolutionary changes that became practical to implement our vision. Interop itself goes back even farther to 1995 with it being productized and released commercially first in 1997 in London. Here you can see David I, Left in Wonder. We also have myself, Bob Swart, Marco Cantu, and Mark Miller at our booth seeing IntraWeb for the very first time. If you think Internet Explorer 11 is bad, just imagine the fun we had with Netscape 1.0 and Internet Explorer 1.0. And it was written in Delphi 1, 16 bits without any threads for even more fun. Instead of threads, we had to perform extensive task scheduling and intertask yielding. In the early days of web development, it was the norm to mix code with raw HTML output. IntraWeb took what was at the time a revolutionary approach which mim was mimicked later by many others including even ASP.NET. Unfortunately, in many respects, the web world is still decades behind Delphi and other languages in both computer science and how web applications are built. With React and Angular, web devs are still intermixing code directly with raw HTML. One might even say there's a resurgence of such a practice. Using this approach in Delphi yields even worse results because Delphi does not have string templating. To us, mixing raw HTML and code would be like eliminating the VCL in Delphi and mixing in direct X calls into your code simply to draw a form. Or another analogy, imagine if 50% of your Delphi code needed to be inline assembly code. Few Delphi programmers would accept this as proper. Yet in the web world, it is not only accepted, but one could say embraced. IntraWeb rejects this notion and takes it to a new level with IWML. Unfortunately, because of time, we had to greatly shorten our IWML demo. We hope you'll enjoy what we have time for, and we will post more videos on our YouTube channel in the near future. As we saw before, we can preview IWML from within Delphi. However, just for playing around or debugging, there is an easier way using a utility called IWML Runner. There are also online versions called IntraWeb Fiddler and IntraWeb Piddler. IWML Runner allows you to play with IWML easily and preview it. To preview it, you can use F9 or select a browser on the toolbar. In a future release, IWML Runner will be available to preview directly in its own window without needing to launch a browser. We are going to use Chrome App Mode so there is no toolbar or menu. This is a simple IWML file. Let's take a look at some more complex ones. IWML Runner is associated with IWML files, so to open it, we can just double click any IWML file. Previously, we saw a very simple IWML. This is Monster IWML, which is one of the many IWML tests we use. In Monster, we can see layouts embedded in other layouts, markdown, and other features. We will cover Markdown a little bit later.
Notice the lines? Those are debug borders. Normally they are off, but can be turned on when debugging custom control code. We can comment them out with a hash mark and retest. Now the debug borders are gone. IWML can be used to test full applications also, if they contain client-side code. Here we have a guest demo completely written in TypeScript. Guest IWML also makes use of data binding. There are two ways to data bind. You can directly bind to a property, or you can bind in Markdown. In this case, we are binding to a code behind object. Data binding also works with REST, which we will demonstrate later. Here is the code for our guest application. Our data bindings reference fields in the code behind class using this keyword, and the fields guess and count that are bound to are seen here. Otherwise, the code is simple, straightforward logic. Note again that it only deals with controls and does not need to interact with the HTML or DOM directly. When we run it, you can see it is fully functional. IWML Runner can be used to test custom controls also. Here we see the chart JS control. By uncommenting the chart type property, we can change it to a pie chart. Another custom control is the full calendar control. Now let's take a quick look at Markdown. IWML Markdown is used to format and otherwise modify text content. Markdown can be used to provide data binding in the middle of other text content as well. We saw this in the guest demo. Markdown supports bold, italic, special characters, data binding, style support, URL links, and more. You can even extend Markdown with your own custom tags, either globally or on a specific page. A to Z uppercase is an example of this. It is a sample extension to uppercase text. With a single line, we added our own custom tag. And here is our output. And as you can see, our uppercase tag also worked. Finally, let's show data binding with REST. This IWML has a REST data source. This can be any JSON source that returns JSON data. You can use Delphi to expose this to interweb, or in the near future you can use interweb 17's transparent REST support, which will automatically convert datasets into REST for you. Once we have a dataset and have named it, we can then data bind to it easily. Note that even the progress bar is using data binding but binds to properties of the IWML dataset rather than the JSON data itself. We also have code to provide client-side navigation without needing to fetch new data from the server. IWML has built-in cursor support and supports multiple cursors per dataset. Remember the status bar and text? Both are updated purely using data binding. No user code was written to update these. This concludes our IWML demonstration. Another major feature of IntuWeb 17 is the ability to run in a WordPress site. WordPress runs over 40% of the publicly available websites on the internet and provides IntuWeb 17 with a huge new deployment target. To enable WordPress integration, a small WordPress plugin is required. Once it is installed, several interweb shortcodes become usable. 
Using these shortcodes, you can integrate a Delphi-based IntraWeb17 application. You can also use raw IWML without the need for a Delphi backend. Raw IWML is useful with simple REST or other existing backends. The plugin only supports IntraWeb17 pages, not IntraWeb15 pages. To integrate the older IntraWeb15 rendering engine simply is too much work, and we would risk breaking compatibility. To use an IntraWeb application, only a simple WordPress shortcode is needed. You can even pass parameters in from a WordPress page. Again, we are time constrained, but we will show you a quick demo of IntraWeb17 in WordPress. As you can see, we have the IntraWeb WordPress plugin installed here, and I'm going to go visit my pages. And here I have several applications installed. We're going to take a look at the guess one. You can see we have a short code here. Normally you don't use the dash demo. The dash demo puts it online and also provides links for viewing source code and other things. But otherwise it's the tag code, the, sorry, the short code is the same. And you can see in this case we're passing in a parameter so we know that our magic number will definitely be 22. Now let's check out to see what it looks like. And there you go. And you can see that it's a full IntraWeb application. It's running within this WordPress theme and it's using the styles from this WordPress theme. So if I change the theme, then my guest application is going to look completely different. And you can see that it's fully functional. Works just fine. I wish we had more time, but now we are at the conclusion. Let's wrap up a few final details before Q&A. If you only wish to use 15 pages, we will continue to support back to Delphi 2009. For 17 pages, however, the ID requirements will be moved up significantly. The numbers displayed here are old, in fact from before Delphi 10.2 was released. Even then you can see that 10.1 and 10 accounted for over 75% of the user base. Before making a final decision, we will reanalyze our numbers based on our new user base. However, support for 17 may very likely be 10 and higher, 10.2 and higher, or possibly even only 10.3. I want to be clear that this decision will be based solely on usage numbers at the time and not old numbers as presented here. With C++ and Delphi from 2009, IntraWeb 15 requires about 30 distinct binary builds. This is very time consuming for us to maintain and many user issues are compiler version specific which increases our support costs. Finally, though IntraWeb 17 uses compiler features that such as attributes, generics, and extended RTTI, these features were not available in older compilers or were not fully developed yet. In other such cases as generics in Delphi 2009, they were just too buggy to be usable in many cases. One of our other products, Crosstalk, which allows Delphi code to use .NET libraries as if they were Delphi libraries, makes minimal use of generics and required us to develop internal workarounds for Delphi 2009. 17 is about moving forward. Despite recent advancements, browsers are still way behind where they should be. 17 will support only browsers which are in common use and support modern web specifications. Microsoft has abandoned Internet Explorer and so is IntraWeb 17. We are supporting its replacement though, Microsoft Edge. If you need to support older, minimally used browsers, you can still use 15 pages from within a 17 application. Even with moving our browser requirements up, IntraWeb 17 will still be able to target well over 95% of the in-use browsers according to today's statistics. The biggest question by far we receive is, when? IntraWeb 17 is currently in closed beta. We will begin to open up the beta in the near future, most likely in December. Early in the new year, we will be allowing a go live beta. This means you can use it in production code, but expect that there still may be some bugs. All core functionality is already complete. We are now focused on knocking out known bugs and expanding our control support. IntraWeb 17.0 is expected in early 2018, sorry, early 2019, with 17.1 following later in the year. 17.1's major feature will be an IDE and also an in-browser WYSIWYG designer. If we wanted only an XY or a grid designer as we have in IntraWeb 15 now, 
we would have implemented that already. But we have something much better in the works that will support WYSIWYG development of all layouts, not simple XY layouts. It will also be fully live, not needing to render placeholders for controls as some controls do in IntroWeb 15. Sometime after IntroWeb 17.1, the face integration will follow. Documentation has always been an issue for software developers and IntroWeb as well. For IntroWeb 17, we have an early start. Much about IWML and even custom controls has been authored and put online many moons ago. Our documentation is now available at a central URL, doc.a-z.com. We do have a blog on our website as well as a YouTube channel. However, the most content is posted to IntraWeb 17 Dev Chatter on Facebook. Often, several posts per day are made showing our current work. We have made this page public so that anyone can view it, even if you do not have a Facebook account. We also have a live chat that you can ask questions about IntraWeb 17. It is hosted on Telegram. Telegram has apps available for the web, desktop, and phones. Telegram requires a phone number with SMS to sign up initially. Unlike WhatsApp, though, it will not expose your number to public chat rooms. If you still have concerns, you can sign up for a free SMS account at TextNow for use with Telegram. And there we have it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and are as excited about IntraWeb 17 as we are. Thank you for your participation in our session and Code Rage. Please spread the word about IntraWeb 17.